When are we as black people going to hold other black people accountable? When? It seems to me that we in the black community are the only ones who praises bad choices, who praises disobedience, who praises craziness. When the black people, when blacks do something, we see it in all of the riots and shootings that goes on across the country. We see it when people are literally robbing their own people out of business. Walgreens, CVSs, everything, KFCs, all around the country, black people robbing businesses out of business. We see it in these horrific smash and grabs where they pull up with their car, break into a business, and rob the people. And I mentioned Walgreens. They go into Walgreens and they steal. And now Walgreens and different critical places are closing their doors. All of these things is happening in the black community through black people. But we do not hold each other accountable. And the second you call it out and you say this or you say that uh, in reference to what's going on, they call you a Tom. They call you a sellout. They call you, what else? <laughs> a white supremacist. <laughs> they call you all of these things um, that you're out here working for the white man and you're constantly bringing down the black people. When you look at what's happening across this country, in reference to what is going on in these neighborhoods through the hands of black people in their own community. But nobody wants to hold them accountable in reference to all of this. Um, MSNBC has a gentleman on there. Again, he will be praising Fonnie Willis in reference to all the good deeds she's done and how, you know, it's about her color, not about her um, lack of integrity. It's no, no, it, it has nothing to do with that. It's, it's her color. It's her color. That's why she's being portrayed in this way. You know, the woman was sleeping with other women's husbands, but yeah, that's, 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 that has nothing to do with anything. So we're going to look at that as well. So let's, Let's do it. It's all about the fanny pack. It's all about the fanny pack, fanny pack, Willis. We see this deflection in the black community all the time where black folks just do not condone when black people do wrong. They just look, look it over. You know, I've, I've heard and seen that they celebrate when people come home from prison, they have this big showdown of a barbecue. Everybody comes together. It's a big celebration, right? But birthdays and other things of important graduations. Yeah. They don't, they don't really, um, applaud those things as much. It's like our values are twisted. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's twisted. And so we applaud bad behavior and good behavior. We sort of just slip it under the rug. We don't even acknowledge it. And so in this video that we're going to look at, we're going to look at a simpleton, a simple man, um, a simpleton who goes on MSNBC to talk about how this is all about race in reference to everything that's happening with Fonnie Willis. It's not about her 
disrespecting herself, disrespecting the man, disrespecting Nathan Wade, disrespecting her office. No, it's just because she's black. It's because she's black and she's a black woman. Uh, this Washington Post article is pointing out, Charles, that race is an ever-present source of tension in the case, and it highlights not just racial harassment and threats against her. The Post quotes one of Willis's senior deputies, writing, quote, we are both aware, especially as African-American women, some find it difficult to treat us respectfully. Trump's lawyer, Steve Sadow, described that email as, quote, offensive, uncalled for, and untrue. But I want your read on what's playing out there. I'm so glad you asked this question, Alex, because this entire ordeal with Fonnie Willis represents the intersection between race and gender in the professional space. And it highlights the fact that no matter how hard you work, if you are a woman, if you are a black woman, there are certain things that you will have to navigate that you would not have if you were a white man, for example. There is a level of privilege that is enjoyed here, and that's simply undeniable. For Steve Sadow, for as accomplished and respected an attorney as he may be, to simply scoff and dismiss that is a level of privilege to sort of overlook how these things play out in ways that he may not simply be able to see because of his own blind spots. At the end of the day, trying to understand understand parts of what it is to be discriminated against, what it is to face things that other people don't face. When you are not a part of a particular group, you give that group the benefit of the, of the doubt. So if you're not a woman, you cannot necessarily tell a woman what is or is not sexism if you haven't necessarily experienced it. It's very difficult for you to call something not racist if you're not someone who's ever experienced what racism actually feels like. And so while I do understand why Steve Sadow may have sort of been offended by it, at the end of of the day, it truly is undeniable that the way that Fonnie Willis has had her reputation and her integrity challenged and the manner in which this has gone on has, from its very start, been fueled by white nationalism through the rhetoric of none other than Donald Trump. Look at his attacks on Alvin Bragg. Look at his attacks on Letitia James. Look at his attacks on Fonnie Willis and contrast those to the things that he said about Jack Smith. One, they're attacking his professional acumen. The other is their humanity and their qualifications, which is a professional insult and very offensive. All of those things are rooted in white nationalism and speak to the very point that Fonnie Willis was making about that intersection of race and gender. Thank you for that well-spoken reality check. I appreciate you and all of that. Thank you, Charles Coleman. Seen that, heard that. Good. So as we've learned through the court hearings, Fonnie Willis really didn't leave her home because of threats, because she um, was trying to indict President Trump. No, she moved out of her home and left her grand old pappy, her old daddy living in her house because she moved to her condo where it was easy access for Nathan Wade to be able to come over and tap that derriere, right? That's one of the reasons she left her home so she can have her privacy without daddy um, peering eyes so she can get her freak on. So them saying this, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's Ill irrelevant. So another point from this uh, video is that she is being disrespected. Well, guess what? Fonnie Willis disrespected herself by putting herself into these situations. Nobody else did this. Fonnie Willis did this. Okay, and he's comparing her to, you know, how the white man or or her white counterparts does, you know, the white counterpart, the male counterpart can can get away with things like this. This woman is a woman, okay? She is a black woman who should be able to mind her P's and Q's, especially when you're out here in these spaces. Yeah, you're not supposed to act like the white man. You're not supposed to act like a man, period. You know, men are out here. Yeah, they're, they're, it's taboo and it's these different things. Yeah, men are, men, men do this. This is what men do. Women, on the other hand, are different thing. You're not a man. So yeah, you're not supposed to be out here conquering your employees, okay? You're not supposed to be out here 
having sex with your employees. And, and it's not good either way it happens, either with a um with men or with, with Fonnie Willis and what she's done. It's not good, period. But again, this is the society that we're in. This is the life that we're in. It happens. Men conquer women, especially in the workplaces. And so, but you know, that she's doing this now, it's 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 not a good look. You know, it's not a good look, especially the black woman. Here you are, you know, having sexual um entourages, <laughs> entourages, encounters. You're having sexual encounters with your employees, right? You're the boss, black woman, hire black man, and then you conquer him, you know, with your sexual rendezvous. And, but this guy just doesn't seem to call any of that out. He's not talking about any of that is that, you know, she's, um, being, you know, profiled or she's being, you know, persecuted because she's a black woman and the black woman can't do exactly what the white man do. I mean, it's ridiculous. This guy is beyond weak. Okay. As a man. Okay, he is beyond weak as a man. If he was under Fonnie Willis, guess what? He would be the uh, under Fonnie Willis because she'd be on top. Okay, she would be running things because this is not what a man is supposed to come out here to say. He's supposed to come out here and say, Sister Fannie Willis, you know, we love you. You've done great work, but my God, dear sister, you know, what you've done with this case, putting your business out here this way. Spreading your cheeks across the country this way. Sister Fanny, you have disrespected yourself. You have disrespected your office. You have disrespected this country in reference to what you've done in your position. Okay? You have disrespected yourself in positions because of your position. Okay? You've done that. But no, they don't come out here to say, they don't come out here and give her a spanking, not on her butt. But you know what I mean, a professional scampy. No, that's Nathan Wade's job to give her the spankings on her butt. But, <laughs> yo, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. But this guy is useless right now. Not coming out here and really condemning her for, for this, but yet just making more and more excuses in reference to, you know, the black woman being, um, you know, abused and, and so on. It's just, it's just useless. And these are the useless simpletons that does nothing good for the people. They do nothing good for the black community. They do nothing good for the black woman. They do nothing good, man. You're supposed to be protecting your black woman. You're supposed to be protecting your black queen. How is this protecting her by coming out here and BSing uh, in reference to her behavior? So it's done with them. 